Hi, this is Rich, and once again I'm going to be working on the 1999 Sienna. Uh, we've got problems with the power seat this time. It would not move uh, forward or backward more than maybe a quarter of an inch, half an inch, something like that. And that's pretty hard because my wife is uh, considerably shorter than I am, and the seat was all the way forward. And I uh, developed kind of a beer belly, so it was hard for me to get in. Anyway, um, this is going to be kind of an um, unusual walkthrough in that I've already done some of the work, so things are out, but I can show you what I have, and maybe that will help. So the passenger seat, front passenger seat, uh, I've removed and set back a little bit to give me some more working room here. Uh, the seat is already out, and this comes out fairly easy other than it being extremely heavy, at least for me, old man. Uh, there's four bolts, two in the front, two in the back, and then there's just this little clip that you squeeze and it uh, unclips, and you can take the whole thing out, give you a little bit of room. I happen to have my boat right next to the Sienna, so I've moved it and used that as my, yeah, I know it's messy. It's my um, work area for right now. There are uh, two rails on this the left and the right. Uh, I've got my light up here. In order to gain access to the roller, to the uh, worm drive, uh, you need a Torx. So this is the uh, this is the right rail and this is the left rail. Typically what happens is there's a nylon um, drive, screw threaded thing, inside here and uh, it's broken one or both of the tracks. On mine it happened to be uh, on the left hand side and I was lucky enough to guess that and open it up and find out that that's what in fact actually happened. Uh, the, uh, this rail is still on so you can see the bolt and there's the bolt. It's a Torx and it is a T50. I had to go to Harbor Freight and buy some because the biggest thing I had was a T30. Um, and you just take that out and what that does is it allows this entire piece to slide out and give you access to the worm drive. So I've already slid this one out. Here's what it looks like. I guess it weighs about, oh, I don't know, 8, 10 pounds, something like that. And that's where the, that's the hole where the bolt went. And it connects into this block, which is where the worm gear, and I'll show you that in a minute. That's where the worm gear connects to. So it sits out like that, actually, that's there. Uh, as I said, this is the block that's in the track area, and this is the hole for the bolt to go through. It goes through, and again, that's a T50. It connects into here, and that holds this track in place, and those are the holes for, sorry, those are the holes that mount it to the floor. And then the track goes inside here, and I'll show you that drive, and we'll show you how to take that out of there. Uh, also, for testing purposes, what I did, and you have to be careful doing this, um, I made a, like a jumper for myself so I could plug in and make the motors work so I could verify which motor it was. Uh, the purple wire is the hot wire, and the white wire is the negative wire. So I've got a little AGM battery down here, um, kind of a project battery that I used. And the motor in the front, this one, that is the um, forward and backward adjustment motor. And then these two are for the, uh, to raise it up. I'm sorry, this one is the one to raise it up. And this one is the one that adjusts the back forward and backward. So you have three motors underneath. And there's only two bolts. Uh, don't oh, there's only two bolts that hold this motor, which again is the one that slides the seat forward and back. It holds it in place, and there are two rods. One goes in each end. You can see it on this one here in the background. How they go on there, and that's to, again that's the one that raises and lowers the seat, and it turns both of them at the same time to make uh, whatever it needs to do happen. And they just, they're very simple. They just go in here. They're little square uh, thingies. There's one right there. Get it to focus. Again, it just has a little square nub. It didn't want to focus. 
Sorry, but it is. It's just a little square on the end. I'm gonna get in real close. No, it does not want to cooperate. Anyway, uh, you take both of those out, one from each end, and then you can operate these independently. The T50 bolt that we took out earlier it actually goes in here, and then this is a worm gear that, that is turned by the motor, and it goes backwards and forwards. This block does on this track, and it moves this entire piece. Again, this is the top one. It moves this entire piece on the track. At the end of the motor, and I'll show you, this is the inside of it, but this is what this is what the outside, you can see the, the worm gear back here, but this is the outside of the motor gears, transmission I guess. And there are two silver rings, one on each side of it, that hold this together. When you take these two rings off, these two halves come apart. Now there is a pin that goes through this end, and that pin is here. You have to use a, a, a small punch and knock that pin yeah, there it goes down there out of the um, little transmission case there and then out the bottom and then that gives you some access on the top of the transmission and again I'll show you that again in a minute there is I'm going to take this one out again this tiny little piece right here and it just of course, when I want it to, it doesn't come out. That piece just pulls out. There's it's like little clips on the edge of it, but that clip will keep it from coming through here. And that stumped me for a minute until I realized that that's what you need. I wish I could get a better picture of this, but anyway, to get that out of the the rail, out of the track, this little plastic piece has to come out, or the thing won't it won't remove it. But once it does, once you get that little plastic piece off, then that this piece here, all of this piece, will come out, and then you can slide that out of the block and take it over and work it on, on the way. Okay. So this is the gear, and it's it's partially disassembled. Um, this is the hole where the pin that we had to knock out goes. It goes down through there to hold that into the track, and on each end of this, right right by the each side of this large box here there's one of these metal clips and you have to take a, a screwdriver and pry those off when you pry those off this can open up and be careful because there's some small parts in here so I'm gonna want to lay that down over here and then this is the worm gear that drives everything uh, well I guess we'll take this out of here first and set that down this is the worm gear that the motor turns. You can see that little square in there. I think you can see that. I don't know if it's going to pop right. There it is. So that little square shaft goes into this and rotates this when the motor turns. And if you, when you take this out, you have to be very careful. This one's metal. I think the newer ones are plastic. But there are, there are two shims, one on each end. Don't lose those shims careful about that and that goes right down in there and then there's a, a metal piece that goes on the end of the, the shaft it's got its own little spot one end is shiny and the other end is greasy and I would assume that the greasy end goes inside of here there. and that's that's pretty much the whole thing now on since this is metal I'm I would doubt very seriously that that would give out, but the newer ones I think have nylon or plastic on them, and that's what this is instead of being metal. I do not know how this is, if this is pressed on or, I think I found one online. I'll have to research and find out what it cost. But you can see that there's a, let me get in here, there's a warm spot there, and I think there might be another one. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's it. But what was happening is is that the on mine, the worm gear was trying to drive this nylon gear around like this to to make the uh, that track move, and it could not. It was frozen in there. I'm going to see 
if I can't heat up a screwdriver and melt that back into place it would be a weak one but this is a 1999 Sienna it's pretty old it's hard to find parts for and we don't have many junkyards close by us at all but those that's the part that needs to be repaired another part to be careful of is right here on the inside of this nylon gear is another little steel washer stainless steel washer and that goes on there and inside of this piece so it all fits nice and neatly together I can't do it very well because I'm holding the camera but you have to make sure that all that goes inside there and then the little button goes on the end there so that's for reassembly so the sad news for me is I'm not going to be able to fix mine I've put a request in to see if I can't find something off of the internet do a part search on it this gear is split you can see a crack right right here That's right you can see a crack right there and it goes all the way up through the gear and opens that gear up right there it does not go beyond this yet it does not go up to this part here so what we have here is this is the this is the bottom piece and then there is that little silver buttony thing that goes in the back end and I put the it looks like it has a curved and flat and I put the curve towards the back because that's it looks like the uh, plastic in the back is slightly curved this um, shaft has a like a little button on the end and it goes right up against that metal part on the front part here well of course this is the gear and this is the, um, the worm gear here and I oh and there's a little tiny uh, shim on each end of this shaft on the top and on the bottom and I don't think it makes a difference it doesn't seem to when you put it in it can go either way and then right on the front of this shaft is another little shim and that goes inside that plastic housing and then you have the uh, the rest of the nylon gear is here and then the worm gear now when I put this cap on it helps to put it on the right way and put this cap on it and these two metal bands are going to go on here to hold it shut and when I look at these bands they have a slight curve to them it looks like it, the flat side will go on and then the curved side is onto the outside there's like little nibs on the edge here you can see some of them eh. There's one right there, and then there's another one there, and they go all around like that. So I believe that's to hold these in place. It's a pretty tight fit. I had to take them off with a screwdriver. And then, of course, this is the hole where the uh, retaining pin will go through. So I'm going to finish putting this back together, and then I'll put it back into the seat. So this is the little plastic part that has to come off before this will slide out from underneath this rail. And... It just it's just a little plastic cap that goes off it's it what it's what guides that axle that shaft that comes off of the motor it fits up inside of here and goes inside this little square on the motor so um, I have this is the shaft is through this metal bracket and this is on a hinge so it it slides in and out and then we have this uh, block that's here and then we have like a little uh, a thick washer here and then we have pardon the jiggle then we have this little key washer and it will go on here or if you're viewing it the other way it, it's going to come off so I'm, I'm doing both of these at the same time so we took this off from here with a uh, just to use a little screwdriver at the very tip of that to get that off and we're going to use the pliers to get it back on again so I have a line mine for it to be full forward which in this direction when I'm looking at the seat back it means that this bracket here the slide is all the way to the left and this one the pillar is all the way to the left also I haven't put that cover on yet because I have to get that pin back in there somehow and I'm probably going to use channel locks and see if that works so I'll have to take off this outside cover which has a screw here and a screw here and uh, 
I'm not going to be able to move this seat much. My wife is very short. So like I said, this seat's going to be all the way forward. I might get maybe a couple inches out of it by scooting it. But I also discovered that it will go all the way back. It just won't go forward at all once you've gotten it all the way back. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll write Toyota. Maybe I'll check the local dealership, see if anybody can come up with something. So now I'm going to take down this outside cover so I can uh, push this pin back up through the front. I've got a, a drift in there right now, but we're going to put that push that pin back up and to get some leverage or to get a hammer in there, I'm going to take this outside cover off and then we should be able to slide that other piece that I've got sitting down there. I'll slide it back on and put that Torx nut uh, bolt rather, put that Torx bolt back in here and then we should be able to mount it back in the car again. Hey, we put the T50 torque nut in there. Well, we slid this uh, bracket into the groove on down here, into where it lined up with the hole. Put the torque, torque, uh, torque F, no, T50 in there, tightened it down. Um, I'm not getting any movement. We can move the back, we can't move this seat. We can raise it and lower, and that's pretty much it. So anyway, now we're going to put it back into the Sienna and uh, hope somebody comes through uh, with a part for me. So that's about all I can do for you. Uh, I wish I had the part that I could repair this, but I'll continue to look. Uh, it's not too bad to take it apart now that uh, I've done this. Uh, I've documented it on here, so if I need to come back to it, I can uh, see what I've done. And I hope it helps you a little bit. Good luck finding the part. Thanks for watching.